Welcome into Texans today, everybody. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs, and coming up on today's program, a mailbag with questions from you, the amazing viewers here at Texans today. And if you're sitting there watching this, maybe it's your first time watching any one of my videos, and you're like, hey, I have something I want to say. I have a question that I want to have answered around the Houston Texans. Well, you are in luck because it's super easy to get on one of our Texans mailbags, just two steps. First, you got to be subscribed to the channel. You also get free daily videos all year long. So go down and hit that sub button right now to get on a future mailbag and get free Texans videos. Step number two, all you got to do is use hashtag Texans in the comment section. You're going to see all the questions on today's show come from our comment section and they just use hashtag Texans to get up on the screen. So go down in there, type hashtag Texans and then whatever you want to say for our next mailbag. First up, Adam Martinez, who's been a constant on our mailbag so far this month. Adam Martinez, shout out to you, a real one. Hashtag Texans, sounds like Laster is CB2 per Aaron Wilson. Who else do you think makes the squad as a base 4-3? Good question. Uh, first off, you know, noted Aaron Wilson. I actually had a video that went out yesterday where Aaron Wilson had put in an article, you know, Juice Grugs being the left guard. He actually messaged me on his, or on uh, Twitter and said, hey, my bad, that was actually a typo. So, Disregard the last part of my video yesterday. Juice Grugs is still slated to play center. On your question, though, last year playing CB2, who else makes the squad as a base 4 3? I'm just going to go starters. I mean, I think your D line is set with Will Anderson, Daniil Hunter, Foley Futakasi, Danico Autry. The linebacker spot is where it gets difficult because you know it's going to be Christian Harris, Aziz Alshire. But that third linebacker in a base 4 3. That's where it's going to be very, very tough. It's either going to be Henry Toto. I do think a couple of the guys that they signed this offseason, notably Jacob Phillips, who was formerly with the Browns, a former early round pick, I believe a third round pick for the Browns. He's been injured his whole career, but he is another guy who could be, you know, climbing up the depth charts throughout training camp, uh, throughout the preseason. Another name to keep in mind. Um, and then the secondary, I think it's Lasseter, Stingley, Petrie Ward to start off with. I don't know if Bullock starts from the get. I think that's how the Texans start out this season. Next question comes in from wherever D'Amico I go. Hashtag Texans. I love the new receiver show on Netflix. If they did a coach show, who would you want on it? This is a great question. This is a great question. Um, if they had a coach, show, I mean, D'Amico would obviously be a top answer for me just selfishly because one, I think he would be very entertaining. And two, I would want more insight on the Houston Texans. But besides D'Amico Ryan, some other guys that I would want on the Netflix show if they did a coach show, Nick Sirianni's got to be up there for me. He's he's really out there. I think either one of the Harbaugh's would be very interesting as well. Um, Andy Reid, I think, would be kind of funny as well because he's, he's pretty quirky, uh, a pretty quirky guy. Besides that... Yeah, I think I think those are the coaches I would go with. Seeps, producer Seeps, do you have any anybody in mind when it comes to guys who you would want to see on the coaching show? Oh, uh, I agree with you on Sirianni. I would maybe go with Jonathan Gannon, oh. Arizona Cardinals head coach. Again, quirky there. Yeah, maybe look, Mike McDaniel. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Okay, I like that. I like. That. I think this is a great question. So I'm going to ask you folks at home. What coaches would you want to see on a Netflix show similar to the Netflix receiver show and the quarterback show that they've already made? If they made a coach one, who would you want to see on it? Let me know down in the comment section as we get into the next question on our mailbag from Pierre Smith. Hashtag Texans, start Petrie and Bullock second, sign Simmons, cut Wood, Brown, and Ward. So a lot to unpack there. Um, start Petrie and Bullock. So the thing is, Pierre, I agree with you on the, you know, start Petrie and Bullock as the two guys. But if you sign Simmons, one of those guys isn't going to start. And I think it might be Bullock because Simmons is a really good free safety, a really good guy on the back end. I mean, these are his coverage stats from last season. But, he, I mean, he's a multiple-time All-Pro, has been one of the best safeties in the league since he's joined it. And, I mean, we see it time and time again. Look at his last four seasons in the NFL. I mean, Five interceptions, five interceptions, six interceptions, three this past season. Simmons is, I mean, he's a stud. So if you sign him, I think the starters would be then Petrie or Jimmy Ward and uh, Justin Simmons. Th those are the two who I would think 
But you also have to consider the Texans have $16.7 million in cap space per Spo track, which is around 17th, 16th, 17th in the league right now. So Simmons' last contract, he was making $15 million a year. Um, I don't know if the Texans are willing to go up that high. I don't know how much Simmons is going to demand on the open market, but if it's around that same number, if you want $16 million a year, that's basically spending your remaining cap space on that one player. So I don't know if the Texans would go that route unless he maybe takes a little bit of a discount. And I just had to throw this in there because my guy VT was in the comment section last time. If you haven't checked him out, Texans22. They do a lot of really good videos breaking down players, doing a lot of the X's and O's. Really love their stuff. But he also said the same thing. He said, I'm still hoping that they will try and add Justin Simmons. Ward has not been healthy for a while, and Petrie is not a deep safety. And that's why I said, Pierre, for your question, if they do bring in Justin Simmons, I think it might be Bullock who misses out on the opportunity because Bullock cannot play in the box. That is probably his biggest weakness and why he fell in the draft is because he's not a very good tackler down in the box. He's really a more rangy guy who you want on the back end who can defend against the deep ball and maybe get a couple picks on some long passes. But thanks for the question, Pierre. Next up is football rocks. How far do you think the Texans make it in the playoffs? Well, I don't want to put the wagons before the horse right now. So I think the first step is obviously making the playoffs. But I would be remiss if I didn't say the Texans have a lot of lofty expectations going into this season. I mean, a lot of Super Bowl buzz. I mean, I know it's kind of like me saying Voldemort right now. It's the, you know, kind of hush-hush. We're not really supposed to be saying it. But a lot of people expect the Texans to make it very far. The bad news is, the AFC is absolutely loaded with talent. You have at the top end the Kansas City Chiefs, who are the repeating champions. They could very well make a run this year. You have the Baltimore Ravens, who knocked the Texans out last year. You have the Cincinnati Bengals, who have another elite quarterback in Joe Burrow. I mean, for the AFC side, I mean, and that's not even mentioning the New York Jets, who have Aaron Rodgers back. The Miami Dolphins, who played well last year, even though they didn't do well in the playoffs, but they had a ton of injuries as well. And then inside your own division, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts. So there's a lot of teams who could be very good. I mean, the the Chargers, they have a brand new coach and they have Justin Herbert. So the AFC is very loaded. I would be upset if the Texans didn't at least make it to the second round, barring injuries or you know, any unforeseen circumstances like that. If they didn't make it to the second round this year, if they got bounced in the wild card, I would be pretty upset. But I'm hoping, I'm I'm really hoping we make it to an AFC championship game. That would really, really excite me for this team moving forward. And hey, I'm going to be along the, for the ride the entire way. I know all of you are super pumped for this season. And some great news, we're going to have a ton more watch parties this season. So if you want to have fun with me, if you want to join the best Texans community here on YouTube, go down and hit that sub button and join us for our watch parties this year. It's like a tailgate like atmosphere where I break down, do play by play for Texans games all throughout the season. So subscribe and join us for all the fun going on this season. Next question from Big Mech 777. Hashtag Texans, with all the injuries to the O-line, does it matter about the tape other teams have on CJ? If our line stays healthy, CJ will be even better, right? I mean, that's the plan, right? Like, CJ Stroud played very well last year. I saw some interesting notes, which I'm going to break down more in a show next year from uh, Warren Sharp. He put, puts out a book each year with a ton of analytics, a, a ton of stuff on each team. And he actually put out some interesting analytics about CJ Stroud and how much better he is inside the pocket whenever he doesn't get pressure. And if this Texans offensive line is able to protect him better than last year, then yes, I see CJ Stroud taking that next step and taking a leap forward. But is this offensive line truly better than last year? A lot of question marks. You have Titus Howard coming back from multiple injuries. Juice Scruggs, who played left guard all of last year, now moving to his main position of center. And then Kenyon Green, who missed all of last year with a shoulder in injury, stepping in at left guard. So a lot of question marks and a lot of, you know, a lot of uncertainty along the offensive line. I know we've talked about it here in the past couple weeks about PFF ranking the Texans offensive line in the bottom 10. What do you have to say? Do you have confidence in them? Fill in the blank for me. The Texans have a top blank offensive line. Do you think it's top 10, top 15, top 20? Do you think it's not even in the top 25? Let me know down in the comment section what you think. Fill in the blank for me. The Texans have a top 
blank offensive line. Next question from Lane to B7904. Hashtag Texans, who do you think we need at any position and who do you think we should get at that position? Uh, we already kind of talked about safety, and I think that could be a need for this Texans team, especially if you don't feel good about Jimmy Ward and Jalen Petrie. Other positions besides that, the only other position I'm a little bit worried about is the cornerback depth and the cornerback position. You still have Stephon Gilmore out there, Xavier and Howard, both really good options. I would probably lean a little bit more towards Stephon Gilmore because also he can play in the slot as well. If you want to play Lasseter outside or if you want to start Lasseter out in the nickel and kind of flex him out in different situations. I could see that as well. And I don't think you could ever have too many good corners on your cornerback depth chart. So if it comes down to it, Stephon Gilmore really wants to play for a contender and he's looking to play for you. I would 100% go out and sign another cornerback like him for maybe like a one year, nine, ten million million deal and make something work like that because then your secondary will really be fortified going into next season. And last question from Caleb713, I know this is the Texans channel, but what do you think of the Astros and the Rockets? Well, I'm a fan of both the Astros and the Rockets. For the Astros, it's around the MLB trade deadline. And I, I've i been talking, one of my desk mates, he's actually a Mets fan, and he's been talking to me about you know, a lot of rumors around about the Astros trading for Pete Alonso, the home run king. Could they get another guy? I mean, that's kind of what they wanted uh, Abreu, to, Abreu to be at first base, right? That power hitter. Um, in the middle of your lineup. So maybe if they could make a move like that, they've been down for the start of this season, had a really good run the past month and a half. So I'm really hoping the Astros can go into the all-star break, sweep the Rangers because I live in Dallas and I can't stand uh, another one of my desk mates, Coop, talking shit about the Rangers all year long. I really hope the Astros sweep them this year. And then the Rockets, I mean, not to bring it back to my, you know, colleagues, but another a guy named Marshall Green is really pushing for the New York Knicks to trade for Alperin Shingoon. And I, it makes me want to throw up. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't want that to happen. But I'm really excited of what the Rockets can do going into next year. They have a lot of young talent and a lot of moves that they could make. I mean, producer Steve literally told me today, he said, I feel like the Rockets might make a move some point this weekend. So stay tuned and find out. I still kind of want to make a Rockets channel. But until then, I'll probably keep you a little updated on this channel as well. That's all I have time for you today folks if you want to follow me on twitter if you want to ask any more questions just chop it up you know where to find me at jeremy chugs and make sure you join the channel hit that subscribe button for daily texans videos all year long